Hey guys, in this video I'd like to explain what a blockchain fork is and what are the differences between a hard fork and a soft fork. We will first understand the term fork, where it comes from, and what does it serve, then we will describe the two types of forks, and then we will move on examples. But before we start, I want to invite you to subscribe and follow me for lots of great future content and surprises. So first, a few words about the term fork. A fork, just like its shape, represents some kind of a crossroad, a point from which a decision is made. All the history and what happened in the past remain the same, however, from now on, there are two different possible passes. In the cryptocurrency world, a fork refers to a situation where there is an update and changes within the blockchain programming code. The decisions for these changes are done by developers, miners, and users, and they can come for several reasons. Usually, it is done in an attempt to improve certain elements of the existing protocol and to make it more efficient. We will touch this in a bit with a couple of real-life examples. So, as I mentioned, there are two types of forks in the crypto world. There's the hard fork and a soft fork. The difference between them is quite clear. In a soft fork, there's simply an update, a change to the program that manages the blockchain in order to add a new functionality or fix specific bugs. With a soft fork, the miners don't need to update anything on their end and they keep operating the same way. Another important thing is that with soft fork, despite the split, only one blockchain will remain valid for users. In a hard fork, on the other hand, all nodes or users are required to upgrade to the latest version of the protocol software. In the hard fork, there's a radical code change that leads to two different blockchain and passes. One that followed the previous set of rules and one that followed the new ones. Another important thing to know is that holders of the original coin get coins also in the newly created blockchain. Miners on their end have to decide in which of the blockchains they will now operate. It's hard to tell which one of the forks is better because both types of forks serve different purposes. Continuous hard forks can divide the community, but planned ones allow the freedom to modify the software with everybody in agreement. Soft forks are more gentle option. With soft forks, you are more limited in what you can do as your new changes cannot conflict with the old rules of the blockchain. So it all depends on the situation and the needs and there is really no one answer as to which one is better. One good example of a hard fork is what happened with Ethereum Classic. To understand how it was created, we have to go back to the early days of Ethereum when a venture capital fund called DAO was hacked and around $50 million were stolen. Vitalik Buterin, the inventor of the ETH, along with his community, decided that this is just not fair. So what they did is to create a hard fork at the new blockchain of ETH that reversed the situation with the hacked coins. So it basically means that the people actually got their coins back. The old blockchain with the stolen coins got the name of the ETH Classic or ETC and the new one is simply called Ethereum or ETH. A good example of a soft fork is the segregated witness or SegWit, which is a soft fork of the Bitcoin. The problem was that there was a great increase of popularity and demand for Bitcoin and the amount of Bitcoin transactions became much larger. And what happened was that each verification took longer and longer. The reason is that, as we learned in the previous video, a block of transactions is added every 10 minutes, and each block was limited by its size to only one megabyte. So the main purpose of this soft fork was to create larger blocks that can contain more transactions, and by that, to increase the speed of confirmation for each transaction and make them cheaper. By the way, the community was divided as for the way to handle this problem. Some thought that it is better to go for a hard fork and create a new blockchain. This is exactly how Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Gold were born. If you'll be curious about them, I'll make a separate video to talk about those. Okay, that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed this video and that now you have a better understanding of what fork is and what are the differences between a hard fork and a soft fork. Please let me know if you have any more questions or other topics you'd like me to cover and subscribe if you find the value in you and want me to create more educational content please subscribe now and turn on the notification button and i'm waiting to see you in the next video